I'm excited about the message today. I'm doing a two-part series called Building the Kingdom. So I would like to tell you about a book I wrote a few years ago called Kingdom Alignment. And this book, Kingdom Alignment, is filled with prophetic words given in the middle of the night, filled with um, uh, the breath of the Lord. Uh, on, on a lot of the pages and um, allegory, poetry, but also strong teaching about the kingdom of heaven. What is it? Who is the king? How do we align ourselves with the king and with the kingdom? And so we've done quite a number of series uh, in, this, in this program. We've done Experiencing the Kingdom, um, We've done a number of series about the kingdom of heaven because it's such a huge subject. <laughs> so I think this book will really help you, Kingdom Alignment. Today we're going to talk about building the kingdom with living stones, really? <laughs> That's the name of it. With ri Really, are we going to do this with living stones? It's bad enough to do them with, with rock, but uh, something that's alive is much harder to work with. <laughs> Anybody that's a leader out there, you could agree with me on that. Um, but whatever we see about the kingdom and God's plans for the kingdom, we know three things. Number one, it belongs to God. <laughs> doesn't belong to man. Doesn't, it belongs to God. Number two, it has to do with his purposes. And number three, he most definitely does have a plan. So we find both in the Old Testament and the New Testament <clears throat> references that God is a house builder. He is interested in building. That's one of the things I love about the nature and the character of God the King is that he builds. He does not destroy. He doesn't take down. He doesn't, he, he builds. And so we see that with the tabernacle of Moses, the tabernacle of David in the, in the Old Testament. And then of course, David wanted to build the house for the Lord. I will build you a house and it'll be magnificent and famous and glorious throughout all lands. But it says that David had, had a war on his hands. He had blood on his hands. And so, but the Lord said, I'll, I'll, your son Solomon will build my house. I, I foretell to you that I will build you a house and I will settle Solomon in my house and in my kingdom. There it is. The house and the kingdom. The house and the kingdom. So he says to, Saul, to David about Solomon, I will settle him in my house and in my kingdom forever. So when Jesus came, first you had John the Baptist, and he was preparing the way for Jesus, preparing the way for the Lord, but also preparing the way for what? The kingdom. Behold, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so then when Jesus began to preach, Matthew 4, he says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What does that mean? What, what does it mean? So Matthew 13, 11, to you it's been given to know the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So there's a mystery involved. And then the position of the kingdom, where is it? Well, it tells us in Luke, the kingdom of God is within you. So the kingdom, obviously, first of all, we learn that the kingdom is a supernatural house that God is building. It's not apostolic networks. It's not denominations. It's not even certain kinds of churches or streams. But it's a supernatural house in the hearts of men. So to understand God's plans about the kingdom, we understand that, number one, he's building a house. Number two, the house is the kingdom. Number three, the house or the kingdom is within us. And we find out with Solomon that when the house is complete, there is glory. Praise the Lord. So it's going to be fun to explore this, this part of the building of the kingdom about building, house building, etc. I once had a vision. <clears throat> I was on a, on a plane 
going to minister in some other country. I was over the ocean. And I had a vision, and the Lord said, this is a vision of the kingdom worldwide. And I just, it was one of those supernatural visions, and I saw that Africa might be the windows of the kingdom on the south, and Greenland might be the roof of the kingdom, and, and the United States and then California on the, on the, on the extreme uh, the, the west, and Asia, the doors on the east. And, 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 I, and I, I was reminded as I watched this spiritual vision of the kingdom, the Lord said, Jesus, remember, is the cornerstone, a living lodestone. He's alive, he's magnetic, and he's holding, Colossians tells us, he holds everything together and all the building and the rest of the building together, and it's a, it's a, a house that's alive. It's a kingdom that's alive. So God's plan in building the kingdom, it's always about building. He takes, he takes something and makes something out of nothing. Sometimes it looks like that. But he is building. He's building a house. Now, I can tell you a lot about house building. <laughs> My husband and I were in a house that we thought was going to be our dream house. <clears throat> and it was by a bayou. And so um, the bayou flooded. And it flooded once. <clears throat> and then it flooded, almost went into the house several times. And every time the bayou would rise, my blood pressure would rise with it. <laughs> and so I began to be obsessed with a new house, with something else, with something that was not what I had that flooded because we did have floods twice, two feet in the house and rebuilding and all of this kind of stuff. And so I just kind of got obsessed by it. <laughs> and my husband and my son thought I'd like lost it. And I was shuffling around one day in my big fluffy slippers and my hair was all over which way. And, and I was gathering up all the, tra the trashy mail, you know, the circulars and everything. And I had my hand over the trash ba basket to throw away the junk. And the Lord said, stop. And I thought, okay. <laughs> and so I pulled my hand back and I went through the trash and there was a letter handwritten from a man that had a prison ministry that had come into our church and I just put a check in the mail. I didn't know him at all. And it was a handwritten letter from him. And he said, I was praying for you today, which was the first miracle. He didn't know me. And he said, and the Lord gave me a prayer for you from his word. Thus says the Lord God, I will build you a house. I went, yes! See, see, because I'd been talking about, I've got, I've got to go build another house. I've got to find some property. I've got to, and they would just look at me, you know, like you look at someone that needs to be carefully handled. <laughs> but we had, I, 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 actually, I was making house plans for this mythical house, you know. But, but we have a promise from the Father. He is building a house. And basically through the Old Testament, he was, he was using the children of Israel to build physical houses for himself. The Ark of the Covenant was in a physical house. And then the New, kingdom, the New Testament opens with the kingdom. So, so they said, now we're going to know that, 2 Corinthians 5, 1, that the tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed. But we have from God a building, a house not made with hands, that is eternal in the heavens. So this is, this is a mystery. How can this be? So 1 Corinthians 3, 9, we find that we are partners in this building of this thing that we don't understand. <laughs> we're fellow workmen in this passage of Scripture. It says we are joint promoters. We are laborers together with and for God. And in fact, it says you are God's garden and vineyard under cultivation. You are God's building. So we are his fellow workmen, but we're also his building that's being built. And it says, according to the grace and the special gifts that God's given me, like a skillful architect and master builder, I laid the foundation and then another man is building on it. So we're talking about one plants, another waters, another build, does the increase. But each man, be careful how they build because no other foundation can be laid than that which is Jesus Christ. So 
Even Peter, who I love Peter because he was so flawed as a person. And he was like all of us. He had all these, all these flaws. But in Matthew 16, Jesus told him, You are Peter, Petros, a piece of a large rock. And on this rock, Petra, a huge rock like Gibraltar, I will build my church. So the first, the first rock is a piece of the rock. But on this rock, the second rock, is a huge rock. So Peter was a small part of a huge rock. And he said, upon this, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not over, overpower it. And he goes on to say, I will give you the keys to the kingdom. So there again we have using human beings to build the kingdom, flawed human beings, Always he's saying, but Jesus is the architect. Jesus is the chief master builder. But he puts house and kingdom and building all in this same scripture. And then he talks about, listen, even when there's war going on, building continues. Zechariah 10.3, uh, I'm, I'm angry against the shepherds who will not build. I will punish them, he says. He says, but out of Judah... Judah, Hebrew word means praise, shall come forth the cornerstone. He's prophesying Christ. And out of him the tent peg, and out of him the battle bow, and every ruler will proceed from him. And they shall be like mighty men treading down their enemies. And they will, the, the scripture says in, in, in verse 3, he will make them as his royal horse in the day of battle. The, the clans of Judah, that's all of us. He is still building. Even though there's war going on, there is building going on as well. Building for the future because there's always a future. In the middle of battle, we think, oh, this is the end. We're never going to make it through this. It's not going to, you know, but, but there's a future. And so God brings this whole building in this house built upon, Ephesians 2.20 says, the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. There's leadership in this. We're going to talk about that in the second um, part of this teaching. And it says that they're together harmoniously and that it continues to rise to be a sanctuary, a temple for the Lord. And you yourselves are being built up. So we're being made a dwelling place for the Lord. And Jesus is the cornerstone, Hebrews 11.10. Abraham, for he was waiting expectantly, looking forward to the city that has fixed and firm foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Even Abraham was hearing from God, was, uh, was uh, in that way a prophet that he heard from God that, that out of this place that he saw, I mean, he went where he didn't know where he was going. You know, only Abraham went out and didn't know where he was going. But he knew somewhere, sometime, there was going to be the city of God. And then, then uh, Isaiah 26, verse 16 says, I am laying a foundation stone, prophesying Jesus, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for he who believes. So building structures. Well, my husband and I bought some new property. <laughs> I got to say, the cornerstone sets the dimensions for the whole building. And sometimes all you can see is the first stone, the cornerstone. And when you're talking about natural stone, that's not all that good. <laughs> Richard and I bought some property, and I just, it was a lot of acreage, and so I just became, um, I became, I fell in love with rock. Well, there weren't any rock on the property, so we had to buy all these rocks, and we started building stone waterfalls and stone stone patios and and we didn't know anything but we had a vision <laughs> we didn't know what we were doing but we had a vision and so the, the the motivation the impetus the adrenaline the adventure was from the vision but then we went to buy the stone and there were so many varieties think about we're going to talk about living stones think about these stones i saw all these varieties. I'm an artist. I paint. I do all this other stuff. And so I, I saw the beauties of every individual stone. That's what the Lord, you know, we're going to talk about living stones. That's what the Lord sees in us. Every one of us is individual. So shocks came with this process. Number one, just the sheer amount of preparation. <laughs> this will really preach. Shock number two, these stones are really heavy. 
and they're hard to maneuver and they're hard to work with. And shock number three was eventually after we bought all this massive rock. <laughs> Shock number three was the enormity of the process. Oh my goodness, the enormity of the project. The first, the first summer we, we worked, it was over 110 degrees Fahrenheit every day for three weeks. 13, well actually 13 days, I guess it was two weeks. And, and, and we were out in the sun working with rock. And in the second project, it was a rock waterfall, also in the middle of the summer. And we were doing, uh, we, it started with just, we were going to build a fire pit. And so, you know, all kinds of things happen. These stones we found out, they don't really fit together. <laughs> How do you make them fit together? Sweaty, hard labor, and they won't fit together. And, and, and if they were all alike, it'd be easier, but, they, but you don't want them to be alike. You want them to have that unique you can't mortar it all in till you build it so that you can see what it'll look like but you can't see what it will look like till you build it but you don't know before you build it what you're going to have to do and sometimes you have to tear it down and then mortar it all back together again and, and let me tell you what, what likes rock, snakes, spiders and scorpions. <laughs> so rock work can be dangerous. I'm telling you this was a big deal. We built this one waterfall that had two big sides and, and the whole thing fell together. I mean, I'm talking, I don't mean fell together as in good. I mean collapsed because we didn't have a proper foundation. And so all of this helps us to understand the importance of the, of the foundation, the importance because now we love our rock work. We love our waterfalls and our patios and it's, it's, they're unique and nothing has, it's like them because it was made with stones that are unique. But a major problem was, you know, after that major problem where the whole thing fell, totally collapsed, we, we waited two years before we went back into it and tried to finish it. And so when you look at the, at the finishing of the temple and the buildings, and we're going to talk about that in Amos and Haggai and, and Ezra and all of the building prophets in the Bible and, and the things that they went through. But <clears throat> when, we, when we finally finished, we saw the beauty and we saw the vision fulfilled. So yikes, the thought of doing all of this when the stones are alive, I can't even imagine it. 1 Peter 2, 4, Come to him then, that living stone, remember it was prophesied, which men tried and threw away and rejected, but which is chosen and precious in God's sight. Come and like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house. So <clears throat> the next time you get upset with your pastor or your leader, think about the fact that he is building a house of living stones and it's a spiritual house and it's a dedicated holy priestly priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices this says so we've got that precious cornerstone and we we, we believe in him and we rely on him because in us he is building his spiritual house and it may be a, a stone that causes stumbling it may be Jesus caused stumbling if you look at all of the history of Jesus, and I think about, I think about those, those projects in the heat of the, the, the sun, in the Texas sun, and the heat of battle, and, and, and I think about all the leaders and the pastors across the earth who are working with lively stones, who are working with living stones, who one day they want to be a stone and the next day they want to be a king and the next day they, and they don't like what you do and they don't like what you say and they don't like the way you say it and, they, and they're, they're, they're living stones and they're not perfect. But as they submit themselves to the master builder and to the under builder or the under shepherd, the pastor, the leader, the apostle, um, and, and the prophets, uh, the foundation is in the apostles and the prophets. And as we, as living stones, submit over and over and over, walk a walk of, of repentance over and over and over, then this building that was, was sometimes rejected, we're going to be rejected for our faith. Hebrews 12 is full of, of the, the, those that 
were rejected for their faith. And, and, and so, we, but we have to become a holy, dedicated, consecrated priesthood. And we have to offer up worship and prayer and sacrifices. The sacrifice of praise. We, we offer up when we don't feel like it. It's the sacrifice of praise. It's we let that living water inside of us as living stones, water out of a living stone. <laughs> as, as that living water comes out of us, then it affects all of those around us because we're a living, breathing kingdom all across the earth. The, the kingdom of heaven is a living, breathing kingdom and it is a house to contain His glory, a corporate house, but all of us are, are, are individual houses. We are living stones. You know, walking on rock is dangerous. It's treacherous. It's unsteady. Walking on and with living stones can be treacherous and unsteady. It can be a, a challenge. But we're purchased. Verse 9, we're chosen. We're purchased. We're a royal priesthood. We're a special people. And we have a purpose. It says that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. So we're in supernatural house, <clears throat> not made with hands. So where is my part? Where do I fit? That's one of the things. And you know, let me tell you, Unlike the mortar and the stone that is still there, most of it, <laughs> that we set in place with all of our building projects, this supernatural building, your place may change. You may be set in one place for a season and then the Lord may move you as things change and grow because it's a living organism. This house, this, this, this kingdom is a living organism. So... We come, for again there in that 1 Peter 2 scripture, in verse 5, he says, come like living stones. Come and be built up. So we have to come to him and we have to say, I, I really messed up bad. I really did some things that I shouldn't have done. Um, I said some things that I shouldn't have said. We have to repent. The scripture says, repent, come and repent that times of refreshing can come from the presence of the Lord. So as living stones, we make mistakes. We make errors. We, make, we, you know, we, we try things and they were the wrong thing. And we have to, the only way to, to grow, the only way to, to mature is to change. And so we enjoy being set into place. I love to look at my, this one particular rock waterfall that... <laughs> fell completely apart. We, 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 we went back, we redid the foundation, and then we rebuilt everything. So if you've done something that you feel like, you know, you have just messed up everything in your life and there's going to be, you're never going to be able to, to recover from it and your life will never be the same. You, you've destroyed your life. Some of you, that's where the spirit of suicide comes in. You feel like you've destroyed your life. Let me tell you something. Ask Jesus into your heart as a living stone. You are a living, living, breathing stone in his hand. And with him, nothing is impossible. And he can take and make new. He makes all things new. The Lord says to you, behold, I make everything new. Your sins are washed away. You have been purged with hyssop and made whiter than snow. And every morning, my loving kindness is new because you're my living stone and I am building you into a holy priesthood. So just come to me. He says, come like living stones and be built into a spiritual house for a holy, dedicated, consecrated priesthood. You're chosen. You're chosen. He has chosen you. You who are rejected. Jesus was despised and rejected of men. I remind myself of this many times as a woman minister. <laughs> Jesus was despised and rejected of men. And yet he was the cornerstone. He was the one that started and then built this whole thing, the whole 
building the whole massive, think of a massive worldwide building project that is supernatural, that is spiritual. He did all of that and yet the people that he came to save, the people that he came to minister to, to change, to offer life to, rejected him even to death. And so we suffer that as well. We suffer rejection. We suffer, but we are chosen. We are royal. We are dedicated. We are purchased. We are special. We are living. We are alive. So we're not going to use our livingness, <laughs> our aliveness to rebel, to go our own way. All oh, we like sheep have gone astray. Everyone's gone to his own way. No, no, that's not what we're doing. We are alive unto God and we show forth His marvelous light. We give out His marvelous light. Not our light, not our ability, not our lack of training, our lack of education, or not all, all that we see is our weaknesses, but we give out His marvelous light. We give out His power. We give out His strength as lively stones, and we fit together. We're going to talk about this in the next, um, in the second part of this, about God's house. We fit together in a corporate way that brings light to the world. Behold, the people walked in great darkness, but upon them has a great light shined. You and I as living stones, as a part of the house God is building, as the house that he is building in us, we are shedding forth great light into the darkness, into this present darkness, into the darkness of this present age. There is darkness, but there is great light. The darker the darkness, the greater the light. So encourage yourself with that. I am full of the light of Christ. I am full of the power of the resurrection power that God raised Jesus from the dead, that Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. It's in me. Holy Spirit is in me. Invite Holy Spirit and Jesus the Christ to thrive in you and strengthen you with mighty power in your inner man as a lively stone, fitly joined and fitly made together to be a holy temple unto the living God. Amen.